Good move, Pop. Good move, Pop. Good move, Mama. You should have said a good pitch. Yeah, Leona, we're going to get you a scholarship, too. He fouled me. Did you see him foul me? No, wait a minute. <laughs> this is a dining room, not a gym. So you check that Pop, outside. Oh, Mama. Mama. Don't you owe Mama me. That's not food. It's too tough to eat, so it stays outside. What? Mama, I love you, but you're wrong. This is food, and more. It's food and clothes for you and Pop, and a house as big as a barn. Hey, Pop. Come on, Mama. Come on, boy. See this thing, Mama? Come on, Mama, look at it. Because it's going to take us off the street. Ain't that right, Pop? Right. It's going to buy us a house where the kitchen is as big as this whole building on a street with trees and grass. And it's going to buy a freezer, Mama, bigger than me, filled with all kinds of food. Right. And you are going to keep that ball right in the bottom of the freezer, right? <laughs> all right. <laughs> Mr. Coroner, we don't think this shooting was done maliciously. We believe it was an accident. A case of mistaken identity. But the police won't have it that way. I don't know why they're afraid of the truth. I wish you would stick to the facts. They've got no case. Well, uh... Wilfred Robinson, please come forward. They got to him, too. Wilfred Robinson? Wolf, yes, Mama. You want to do what's right, and I want you to. So I want you to be a man. So you be a man right now. And from now on, no matter what happens, You'll be a man for the rest of your natural life. Wilfred Robinson? Well, is he here or not? Now, did you know this uh, boy, Nathaniel Hamilton? Yes, sir. I knew Cornbread all my life, ever since I was a real little guy. All right, on the date in question, did you see this occurrence? Yes, sir. Where were you? In front of the store. Which store? Mr. Fred's store. All right, Wilford. <clears throat> now, you go ahead in your own words and you tell us what you know. And you start at the beginning and tell us everything you know. Well, it all started when me and Earl was watching Cornbread and the other big guys play basketball. Then it started to rain. And then we all ran down to Mr. Fred's store. Mr. Fred, he was mad at having all those kids in his store. So he began to yell in. Pretty soon it was just Cornbread, me, and Earl. And then Cornbread brought us each a pop. And, you know, he was always good to us. Then he bought one for himself. And then one eye came in. I beg your pardon, did you say one eye? Yes, sir. Everybody out there knows one eye. I see. <laughs> Go on, son. No. Then Cornbread said that he had to get moving. So he bought another pop for himself to drink at home. And then we said that he ought to wait until it stopped raining. But he said no. That he had to get on home. And then, me and Earl, we got to arguing. We's always arguing as to how fast Cornbread could run home. And I said, maybe ten seconds. And Cornbread laughed and said, no, about twenty-five seconds. And then we made sort of a bet. Then me and Earl and Mr. Fred and one eye went out into the awning with Cornbread. Cornbread took off with his basketball under one arm and his orange pop in the other hand. 
Boy, you should have seen how he ran. Cornbread ran. Didn't even look like he was moving. He could sure run. And boy, was he moving. And then, me and Earl, he gets to counting. While cornbreads are running, you know, and on one, and at two. And cornbreads pumping away, and it's raining, and cornbreads racing down the block. And then those two cops, they run into the street. And it looks like they yelled something. But I, I couldn't tell what it was, because there was that garbage truck grinding away. Anyhow, those two guys, they, they had out their guns, and they shoot. And they shoot cornbread. Then he was dead. They killed Cornbread, and he wasn't doing nothing. All he was doing was he was just going home. I don't know who's lying, but somebody is. The kid's got to be lying. Counsel, do you have any questions? Just one. Wilford. Mm hmm. Do you know anything about cornbread belonging to a gang? No, sir. He didn't belong to no gang. Didn't have to. Besides, he was always playing basketball. Sometimes at night, when it was quiet, I could hear the bamming and bamming of that basketball right up against that backboard. And I knew it was cornbread because it couldn't be nobody else. Yep, and that bam, bam, bam will put me right to sleep. No, sir, he ain't belong in no gangs, not cornbread. It took a lot of courage for you to come here this afternoon. I'm proud of you, son. Thank you. Officer Atkins, let's have you up here. It's late and I don't want to waste any more time. Now, you heard the testimony of the investigating officer. Yes, I did. Do you concur with his testimony? Well, sir, I... Officer, I'm waiting for an answer. Larry! Don't. Rotten bastards, won't they get it over with? Uh, you see, sir, what we wrote in that report is correct. We were pursuing the suspect, and we did utilize standard police procedures. Officer, you're trying my patience. There's no need to repeat to me what's already in the report. Yes, sir, I understand that. Uh, I have been listening to the testimony here today, uh, especially the testimony of that little boy. And I have to say that... Uh, I think he's telling the truth. Just a minute, Atkins. Officer, do you realize what you're saying? Yes, sir, I do. I realize that what I'm saying is that if that kid is telling the truth, and I think that he is, then God forgive us because we must have shot the wrong man. <laughs> 